Welcome back! It's me! Okay, hello everyone! My name is Ines and this is a new Spark AR tutorial. Today I want to talk about three very easy screen effects that you can do that will elevate your AR experiences and make them look very professional and very polished. So without further ado, I want to talk about color lookups today. I want to talk about grain effects that give a more vintage vibe. And I'm um, also gonna add a vignette and in the end I can show you how to add the face retouch effect on top of all of that. But more of that later, let's get started with the LUT. So I just opened a brand new Spark AR project and right from the start let's change the preview video to this little guy because just look at him, his little dance just makes me happy every time. To add a color overlay, we need a canvas. So right click on the camera and add the canvas in here. I'm gonna call it screen effects. On this canvas, I will create a rectangle and call it LUT. Over here you can set the width and the height to fit the screen and create a new material by clicking on the plus. I'll rename it because we're keeping it clean to LUT and we change the shader type to flat. Now if you go in the AR library you can already find a bunch of color LUTs that look really nice. I'm gonna go with this one for now and we just import it. If we drag this asset into the patch editor, you can see that it has the texture and a color lut shader. So to apply the color lut to the rectangle we just created, we go into the material and create a texture patch by clicking the little arrow next to it. Now we connect the color lut shader to this texture patch. And now we still need the camera texture that we want to combine the colors with. So click on the camera and click camera texture extraction. This will add the camera texture asset into your assets panel. Now we just drag and drop it into the patch editor and connect the RGBA outcome to the texture input. Here we go. We're done. That was very easy. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see the difference that this color look makes. You can change the intensity I usually don't put it to 100%, maybe like 80 or something, just to make it look a bit more natural still. Let's talk about grain, because I really like this kind of nostalgic vintage feeling that it gives. Grain is kind of little dust speckles or scratches that kind of make it look like an old movie. And to add this, we will create a new rectangle and fill width and the height again. Also, of course, rename it because clean. Then create a new material, call it grain, and change the shader type to flat. I already prepared a image sequence that I can use here. You may not see what's happening here, but this is basically tiny white um, speckles on a black background. You can find these grain image sequences online or you create your own in Photoshop or any image software. To create a texture animation, we go through import and click texture animation. This will give you this little pop-up here and you can choose your files. I'm going in here and select all of that textures. You can also change the texture quality here. I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. We don't need to add it to a plane since I already created a rectangle I want to apply it to. And then we import. Now I select the grain material and set the grain image sequence as a texture. You notice our screen is black now, which makes total sense because our texture is black. 
But if we change the blend mode to screen, you can see that only the white little speckles will remain and all the black pixels will be transparent. So let's add a vignette. This also just needs a rectangle like the others. Again, fill width and fill height. You might notice a pattern here. <laughs> Create a new material and we call it vignette. Here I prepared this texture that already has the kind of black gradient to transparent. So the focus is really at the center of the image. We change the shader type of the material to standard and set the vignette texture into the texture slot of the material. As you can see, we have the black vignette and we can change the opacity to make it stronger effect or just more subtle. Let's talk about color looks a bit more because this is very important to make your effect look very polished and put together. Um, if you're not happy with any of the color looks they already have in the library, you can also create your own. For that, you go back into the library and you search for the default one. As you can see, the picture on the right is not different to the one on the left since there is no color adjustments made so far. I import it and then I show it into the Explorer. Now I can use this texture in any image editing software that I like, like Photoshop or GIMP. Um, but sometimes I just use my phone because that's very handy. So let me show you how I usually do it. So first you want to choose a random picture from your camera roll that has not been edited yet, fresh from the camera. And I have a picture of me here eating spaghetti and I'm just adjusting the RGB color values to make it look very extreme. That's a very extreme color effect, just so we can see it later in Spark Air better. You can do any adjustments you like, like um, brightness, saturation, and of course the color values change. What you can't do is add grain, add a vignette already here, for example, or um, make it sharper or something like that, because these are all effects we need to do later in Spark AR itself. Once I'm happy with my adjustments, I export the image and in this app it remembers all of the adjustments I did. So once I open my default color loot, I can just apply the changes I did from the one before onto this one also. And again, you can use any software you would like. It's just important that you copy all of the adjustments you made to your photo and just copy paste that onto the default color loot and that's it. Now you can import it. This is my edited one. And once I drag it in here, we will also get this color lit shader. Now I don't need the shader since it's already there. I just want to exchange the texture itself. And as you can see, our guy here has the same color adjustments as I did in my app. Also, the environment looks very pink and we love that. <laughs> As a little bonus, I can show you how to iterate through multiple color lids so you can have different color effects in one effect. So I will add a screen tab node and a counter. If we activate simulate touch in the preview and we tap here, you can see that, that it fires the pulse to the counter. Now, after the counter, I'll add a option picker 
and change the variable type to texture. I only have two textures so far, so I'm gonna change a number of options to two. And I connect my two textures to these inputs here. Then we connect the output of the option picker to the color loot input. Yeah, we need to change the maximum count to the number of textures we have. Now when we tap, you can see we're iterating through the two textures. And this is very easy to expand if you want more textures, for example. You just change the numbers of options you have, connect the new texture, and also change the maximum count of the counter. So now when you tap, you can toggle through three textures. So what if none of the color loads from the library suits your needs and also you don't really want to create your own? So you Google and most of the time you will find these square color loads. So if you have one of those square ones and connect it to the color loot shader, you will see that the preview does wild things. <laughs> the only thing you need to do here is change the grid size to 8x8 and then you have the same effect. So let's talk about face retouch because the retouch is pretty common and a lot of people like to have at least a slight skin retouch effect in their lenses, but these don't always work with the screen effects you have. So let me demonstrate the issue here. I'll deactivate this one for now and just create a regular retouch effect like I would normally do. So we add a face mesh, we call it retouch and give it a new material. Let's call this retouch and change the shader type to retouch effect. So now when we change the slider, you can see that the skin gets very, very smooth to none. And I usually keep it at like 20%, but that's really up to your needs. But now when we activate our screen effects again, you see that the slider doesn't do anything anymore. And that is because the color loot combined with the camera texture will get rendered on top of the skin retouch. To resolve this issue, we can duplicate our retouch face mesh and let's call this retouch loot. We add a new material for this one. Name it accordingly. And we change the shader type to flat. We activate alpha and as a texture here, we're going to use the skin smoothing texture that we got from the smoothing material. Next, expand the advanced render options and untick these two checkboxes. So to see what's happening here, I'm just going to put this on top of the screen effects. Let's create a texture patch from this material and add the loot to it. So let me just duplicate this loot shader here, but instead of connecting it with the camera texture, we want to extract the face texture. So select the face tracker and click texture extraction. This will add this face tracker texture to our asset library, which we then can connect to the texture input and we can use the same loads from the option picker output. Now connected to our material, Oh yeah, let's change the grid size so it works again. And now you can see the skin smoothing actually works, even with the color lid. You might notice a very thin black line underneath the chin, and we can avoid that by enabling alpha test and increase the cutoff so that the line disappears. 
Now it can be beautiful and purple at the same time. Hello, this is Editing Ines. I just noticed one more thing with this face retouch. And that is if we go closer to the edges of our effect, your face retouch is still very much visible. And that is um, because of this vignette that gets uh, is underneath the retouch still. So a very easy solution is to just take the space tracker <laughs> and place it between the lid, like on top of the lid, but under the vignette. So now when we move closer to the frame, everything looks good. And let's see if the retouch still works. Yes, that also still works. So that was it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you want. That would really help me out. Also check out my Instagram and my Snapchat for more AR content. And feel free to leave any suggestions for more videos in the comments so I know what I should get into it more or what you're interested in. And until then, I hope you're having a wonderful day. See you in the next one. Bye. Woof woof!